Uh, but I wanted to address this whole issue of the, um, the, the genuine check, right? So if you're setting up a brand new device, and I can show you similar what it, if you're going through the device setup and uh, you get to this point here uh, where you know, you've, uh, you've either uh, set it up following their instructions or you already have your phrase and it's already been set up and now you're just connecting it to Ledger Live, you're gonna get to this point where it wants you to go through the genuine check. Uh, I get a lot of people that have told me that they failed the genuine check. And uh, now they don't trust their device, right? I kind of want to explain that that's not how this works, right? Um, let's put it out there like this. A genuine, it is exceedingly rare for you to have a non-genuine device, right? especially if you bought it from Ledger directly. Exceeding, I don't know that anyone has ever bought a non-genuine device from Ledger directly. That would, that would mean that somehow their supply chain got, you know, compromised. Uh, if you're going to get a, a non-genuine device, it's usually, you know, through some eBay or something like that. But anyway, a genuine device can fail the genuine check, right? Just because your device fails the genuine check does not necessarily mean it's not genuine, right? Now, a non-genuine device will never be able to pass the genuine check, ever, not once. But if you have a genuine device and it has failed a genuine check and you try again and it works, then it's genuine, right? Don't think, oh, it failed once, so now I don't trust it. That's not the way it works, right? Uh, so let's go through. I, I did this little chart. I'm going to put this up. So the genuine, this is the way the, the, gen, the, the genuine check works, right? We start with our device. Our device is connected to our computer through Ledger Live. So every device is given a, a code, or we call it a secret key or a private key. This is a cryptographic key. This has nothing to do with your wallet, right? This is completely separate from your wallet. This is a cryptographic key that is placed on every ledger device, right? So this little private key that's on this device goes through the cable and it hits Ledger Live, right? Ledger Live takes that private key or that code, that really long number, and it sends it out a lot th onto the internet, right? And then your code hits the Ledger Live servers, right? Now, when your code hits the Ledger Live servers, that's where the magic takes place. That's where there's this cryptographic handshake. It's a mathematical thing using advanced cryptography. So your key interacts with their public key that they have on their servers. And that mathematical handshake verifies that your code is a valid ledger code, right? That means your device is genuine. But look at all the steps your little code has to go through before it hits the ledger servers. Has to, uh, has to travel across the cable. So that's our first point of failure. So if you are trying to do your genuine check and you have a bad cable, the genuine check is going to fail or you don't have it plugged in. Now, granted, the genuine check will tell you that you need to connect your device if it's not connected, right? So if you are having uh, trouble with your cable, uh, Ledger Live will generally give you uh, you know, uh, you need to connect the device message, right? But I don't know. Some people might think that they failed the genuine check because it never connects. Uh, that's a connection issue, right? I'm not sure if having a bad cable would ever generate the your device is not genuine message. I, I've, see, I've seen it happen. 
I've seen that message before, and I've had it happen when I'm restoring a device or something, which I know is genuine. And as soon as I see the message, I say, oh, it's, just, it's just a glitch. So I try again, and then it works, right? So we've got the cable, and we've got the software. This is all local to you. So if you have a glitch and you get the message that your device is not genuine, try plugging the cable. You know, first, first thing you do, try again. Just try again, right? Reboot your computer, reconnect the device, and try again, right? And if that doesn't work, uh, maybe try the cable in a different USB port, right? If that doesn't work, maybe try a different USB cable. It's a standard USB-C cable. Uh, it could also be some software problem on your computer. You're, you're running an old version of Windows, or your computer's old and it's not working very well. Your hard disk is fragmented. All kinds of like environmental issues that could cause you to fail the genuine check. Right? Usually, if you try again, it'll work. Right? Computers glitch. So don't feel like if you get that error message telling you you failed the genuine check, that now you have a tainted device and you can't trust it anymore. That's not the case. If it, pass, if, it, if it can pass the genuine check one time, you know you got a genuine device. Right? Uh, also, you could have a bad internet connection, right? Check your modem, right? Maybe reboot your modem. Uh, another rare occurrence could be the ledger servers are down. This happened uh, a couple years back. The ledger servers were down. So uh, you, couldn't pat, you couldn't do genuine checks for, I don't know, it was just a day, maybe, maybe less, right? That could happen, right? But this little thing here, this cryptographic handshake, that's all math, right? So either it passes or it fails the genuine check here, then you know, right? But I guess what I'm trying to say is if it fails the genuine check, don't just throw up your hands and say, oh, I've got a bad device, right? I know everyone's real paranoid and everything else, and, oh, they don't trust anybody or anything, you know, and, oh, I got a bad Ledger, you know, but if you bought it directly from Ledger, pretty rare that you're going to have a non-genuine device, right? Usually it's something between your cable and your computer or your Internet connection that's causing you to fail the genuine check. And that a nice reboot and a re disconnect, reconnect won't can fix pretty easy. It's just that a lot of people, once they see that fail message, now they don't trust their device anymore. But it shouldn't be like that, right? If the device can pass once, then you know it's genuine. Even if it's failed 10 times before that, and you rebooted your computer and changed cables and whatever, if it, if it finally passes, then you know you're good, right? So I don't know. I don't have my device attached at the moment. Let's go ahead and let's connect it. I'm going to go ahead and enter my PIN here. All right. So uh, we'll click Check My Nano. First, it wants me to connect, right? So if you if you don't connect your device, it might not work. <laughs> All right. So we'll hit both buttons here. We'll allow the Ledger Manager. And this, this device should pass, right? Boom, there you go, confetti, right? That's what you're s supposed to see, right? If you get an error message, then, you know, before you throw up your hands and start trying to call Ledger, just try a few times. Make, try some troubleshooting steps before you convince yourself that you have a bad device and that you don't trust it anymore.